Hello, Tanya. Nice to see you again. Hello. How thank are you. you today? Good, yeah. thank you. That's good. It's good. It's good. Just waiting to make sure everyone's it's in the room okay. <laughs> Screen. We're not streaming today. It's not set up properly. All good. <laughs> Share the recording later with everyone. Okie dokie. Hey, Julia. You promised you were going to come on camera next time. Oh, shit, you're right. I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey, good to see you. You do. <laughs> How are we? Very good, thank you. That's good. Still got people coming in, so it is great. Uh, hello and welcome to a repeat of the Smash Procrastination webinar. Uh, some of you may have missed it sometimes and last time and some may have procrastinated on it and not got there. So uh, it helped so many people last time that we decided to run it again. Uh, so yeah, if you could just kia ora Francis. If everyone could just drop in the chat where you're from and uh, what you're hoping to get out of today uh, and maybe a little bit about yourself so we can get to know each other and I can uh, do my best to keep an eye on the chat and make sure that I'm answering any questions uh, that might come up throughout as well. Um, so procrastination, such a great topic. Oh, kia ora Cassie, good to see you here again. Francis is in Auckland and a master procrastinator. Awesome, you're gonna uh, enjoy today. Let's uh, see if we can uh, make you a master uh, doer <laughs> going forward. Uh, love it, love your openness and honesty to share. Helps us um, yeah, have a better, a better webinar. And so yeah, the more you interact throughout this, the more you're gonna get out of it and um, Originally from Paulinger. Awesome. Julia wants to keep herself grounded. So yeah, let's let's just dive on in and uh, see where this takes us. I'm really excited for this one today. Um, if you're able to be on camera, I'd really love that. See your faces so that I can see, um, so that I can interact with you a little bit better. But I understand that not everyone can come on at all times. So, oh, good. Yeah. We all need to get shit done. Let's get some GSD happening. <laughs> Love it. So for those that don't know me, and there's a few people here I do know, there's some new people I haven't met before. So uh, I was uh, had my own electrical business. I started in 2016 and um, found myself in that, that hustle and grind of, um, yeah, just working endlessly, tirelessly, and many hours, giving the, the best of me to my customers, my clients, uh, and my family just got what was left. So I was lucky enough to, to reach out to a coach that could help me with that. And then also realizing from that how procrastination was actually keeping me working longer hours as well. Um, John, awesome to have you here. Oh, you're in Keynes. Didn't realize that. I thought you were on the Gold Coast. Uh, nice and warm up there, I bet. Um, yeah, so being able to overcome that, I, I yeah, went to less than 10 hours a week. And uh, now, actually, my electrical business runs uh, autonomously and allowing me the time and space to do this work and help more people overcome that. Uh, and yeah, went from being exhausted and um, stressed out to something that is really empowering and impactful, uh, which is this kind of work, uh, changing people's lives is uh, a lot more. Um, 
it lights my heart up a lot more than changing someone's light bulb, I guess, would be the easiest way to explain it. <laughs> you're, a, you're a step ahead of me, Julia. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I often joke that I went from working with uh, lights and, and energy to, to working with uh, light and energy. Um, so I just guess I misunderstood what I was supposed to be doing, my purpose when I was younger. Uh, obviously, you know, being an entrepreneur or a business person, uh, I know a couple of people here will work as uh, entrepreneurs uh, in their own businesses. Um, it can become a, quite a lonely space and um, the guilt that comes with, well, there's a, the lonely side of it and then there's the guilt of how that impacts your family. Um, so yeah, just discovering, getting clear on my uh, life goals and the, the precise steps I needed to take to achieve those things and uh, allow me to be empowered and guide others to realize their dreams as well uh, ha has been the best period of my life it's also been uh, a tough period you know there's a lot to overcome as you you work through these um, things but it's well worth it uh, and that's what life looks like for me family is first uh, first and foremost, a family man, a father. Uh, love everyone in this picture so deeply. And what what is the point of, of what we do if we're not sharing it uh, and we're not connected to those around us? Uh, I think you've got to have got to have those around you. Though remembering who's most important to you at the forefront of your mind when you're uh, entering anything like this, because they give up so much for us. So yeah, just wanted to share that with you. And on that uh, relationship note, my next workshop, I'm actually teaming up with my darling Kelly and we're gonna go through how to build a thriving relationship and discovering the secrets to building a powerful relationship that grows stronger every day. So that's gonna be my next live workshop. Uh, and I know John also works in the relationship space. So um, yeah. Just, just going to be sharing, going three hours this one. I, I don't have the link yet, so if you want to be on that, make sure you uh, message me. It'll be in Saturday, two weeks from tomorrow. And, yeah, me and Kels are going to dive into how we do all of these things for ourselves. But we're here for procrastination and overthinking. So I'd love to hear in the chat ways that procrastination shows up in your life and some of the impacts that that causes um, on your life. So yeah, just drop in the chat or, or come off mute if you want to share uh, ways that you procrastinate or overthink and how that affects um, your day-to-day -day life. Hey, Emily, you're looking beautiful today. Lovely to have you here. Those of you that uh, follow me on social media or interact on social media have probably interacted with Emily as well. She's uh, my very capable assistant. So lovely to have her in the room. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just drop in the chat how, how you procrastinate and what that could be costing you while I go through. So some of the, the ways that, well, probably the most common form of procrastination is the doom scrolling uh, in this day and age. And we all do it. Uh, I've picked up my phone and like you all and uh, an hour later gone down some rabbit hole of watching funny videos <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then I, I put the phone down and I remember what I actually picked it up to do and I, I jump <laughs> have to get back on the phone to do it so um, Facebook marketplace that could be a costly one Francis <laughs> uh, easily distracted John yeah uh, yeah, Cassie's a scroller too. Tanya, avoidance. So that's the next one on the list. So avoiding uh, what we have to do, what's most important because something's easier uh, or less fear is created around it. Uh, Cassie loves marketplace as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, my son's a bit like that too. He wants to buy it. Um, things that we don't have room for right on lawnmower for 10 square meters of lawn 
uh, things like that. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it can, uh, can be an interesting place to to overcome the old social media and uh, online presence. So, uh, lack of priority, I see. You know, getting your priorities in the wrong order, uh, going for what's easy, what's familiar, um, and yeah, not really being really clear on what is most important for me to get the outcome I want in my life. And then when we don't get the outcomes that we want in our life, then that leads to other um, mental issues where we start to feel bad about ourselves or um, bad about what impact that's having on our family. Uh, another common one I see with clients is waiting for inspiration to hit. Like so sitting in front of the computer, I oh, don't know what I'm going to post about. Uh, and I'm talking from a coaching perspective here. <clears throat> when I talk like that, um, but also, you know, in other, other businesses or even in your job, if you're a creative type person sitting there waiting for the next good idea to come your way, uh, rather than going, what is it I want to share and how can I decide um, the steps I need to take to, to make that happen? Um, <laughs> yeah, kids close schools, sh shoes. In books and toys. <laughs> There's plenty of that on Marketplace. <laughs> um, doing unimportant tasks. Uh, you know, like yeah, you've got a really important job or you've got an um, assessment that you have to have in or an assignment that's due. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I've just finished uh, redoing the NLP and that's where I met John and, and also I met Tanya before that, but she was there. And... I went through and did the assessment this time, but the first time I said it, I didn't get around to uh, getting that assessment done. Good at showing up for all the calls, doing all the tasks, but when it comes to actually putting that in, um, I'd find myself uh, unloading the dishwasher or cleaning the kitchen or things like that. that <laughs> they're, they're good. Um, it helps for a happy, healthy home and relationship, for sure. However, it wasn't getting me just the last step I needed to get the certification through. So glad that I got that done. Um, porn addiction is a, a big one showing up in this day and age. And the, the effects that that is having into relationships and, and the um, false idea of the world, I think, uh, is, is a big one that that's causing. And then substance abuse. Uh, let's go let's go have a beer rather than um you know finishing the task this afternoon oh the sun's out you know any excuse any excuse um use something like that still got people coming in this is awesome <coughs> uh and obviously drugs is, is another big problem you know that that quick hit that quick fix that um people are looking for so i'm just trying to find my actual main page with this one it has disappeared off my screen. Anyhow, I'll just carry on. I won't know what's coming next. <laughs> so some of the most commonly known reasons people procrastinate, and I'd really love to hear the reasons you believe you procrastinate. Is it a fear of failure? I had a massive fear of failure um, as, a, as a young person, Anything, I, I grew up on a, a dairy farm, and so anything that didn't produce uh, food, I guess, or even things that didn't, uh, not look right, I'm trying to find the right word, um, you know, had a defect with them, and they weren't a top producing animal, uh, was put on a truck and off to the meatworks, and, um, you know, that's where the money came from, from selling the meat from them. So this un unknowingly to me created this fear of failure. If I failed my dad, I'd get put on a meat truck and I'd die. Uh, obviously not the truth and not realistic, but this is something that I picked up subconsciously as a child. So that's where I'm going with today is how we make these beliefs as a child and that leads to some of this procrastination. Also the fear of success 
that come from where we lived. It was a, a beach town. And I talk about this a lot because it, it's, it was such a surprise to me to know that I had a fear of success. And the beach town that we lived in, we had holiday makers come in. Uh, they all had their second homes in this uh, beautiful beach resort from the city that escaped the city that come and take over our little town. Um, and Julia will understand that from living, she, she was living not far from me till recently uh, or not far from where I grew up. And so the locals would get really upset about all these rich people, successful people that would come in and take over our town because they had to line up for their groceries. Um, you know, third <laughs> first world problems. Um, and so hearing all that negativity about what, how they talked about people with money and, and wealth and success and nice cars and nice clothes, had created this fear of success in me at a very subconscious level. So uncovering that and uncovering I had a fear of failure, I could then understand why I was never content and why I was would never quite get there in success and why I felt like I was always heading towards failure or I'd create failure in my success and I'd create success in my failures. Um, which is a whole nother rabbit hole to go down and we don't have time for that one today. Yeah, more money, more problems. I think I have a fear of success. That's a great one to um, uncover there, Cassie. Uh, lack of motivation can be another um, common reason for people to uh, procrastinate. Uh, and again, that that's where that waiting for inspiration to hit. So not lack of motivation motivation generally comes from not having a plan and not knowing your bigger purpose that you're doing this for because uh, once you know your bigger why that motivates you uh, that's what motivates me to get out of here out of bed <laughs> yeah we'll get dive into that rabbit hole uh, another day um, about how un unwinnable loops loops we call them cassie so uh, when you're stuck in this the circle um of not winning or not winning and not losing because of your belief system you're going around in these um, unwinnable loops and so the key is to find that loop become aware of it and break that loop uh, interrupt that pattern zero sum game i'm not sure what you mean by that but i'm assuming actually can you type a little bit more about that and i'll ask that uh, answer that question um perfectionism who here's a perfectionist and gets stuck not <laughs> not starting because it's not perfect? Yeah, big big trouble. Um, the perfectionists, and and again that that comes into that fear of failing, or uh, it, like I like I said that fear of six uh, fear of failure I had was around perfectionism because if the animals weren't perfect, um, then they got shipped off to the meatworks. So I felt like I always had to be perfect for my dad. And so it gave me that sense of working around, walking around on eggshells. And none of this is the truth. I had a great supportive father that did a lot for me. It was just the, the decisions I made at a very young age around what I witnessed. Uh, so yeah, that perfectionism was built into that fear of failure. And then, yeah, if I don't start, then I can't fail. And then I can't get um, then I won't be seen by anyone else to fail. Similar to if I don't set goals, I can't fail, or no one will see me fail if I don't uh, announce my goals to the world. Uh, and then the other one is overwhelm. I, a lot of us get so overwhelmed. There's so much going on in the world right now. Uh, <laughs> Cassie says she feels so seen. No, that's good. Being seen as the first first step towards uh, change, and, and seeing yourself as the second step towards it. <laughs> uh, yeah, overwhelm is such a big one. Overwhelm can come out of that doom scrolling. It can come come at us from so many different areas of our lives. We live such a busy life, and I really don't understand why. Why are we so busy today? I remember as a, when I was younger. We used to have to go to the bank to get money. <laughs> we used to have to go to the shop to buy the groceries. 
uh, you know, a lot of these things that we used to have to actually get out and do, we don't have to do anymore. It's all on our phone at our fingertips. So why are we so overwhelmed? Is it because the expectation's higher? Or we put higher expectation on ourselves, Or is it because what we're seeing of the world has lifted the bar of what we expect of ourselves and we're trying to reach something that we don't actually desire? Uh, and if that's the case, then we need to get clear on what it is we do desire and start uh, forging a plan to move towards that. I'm just going to jump back to these questions in the chat. Oh, zero sum game. Yeah, no winner. Um, that's a dangerous place to be when that zero sum game, as you put it, I like that, is with yourself. So you can't win, you'll, you'll never win the game. The On the flip side of never winning that, your ego feels like it has won because it's proved yourself right that you of a belief that maybe I am a failure. Uh, I never succeed. Any of those beliefs that you have there, your ego gets to prove itself right. So you actually feel like you win and you actually get a dopamine hit off it when your ego wins. And that's why your ego is so um, so driven and, and holds so strongly because it loves that feeling it gets when, um, when you fail. Even though you don't consciously uh, the ego is getting something out of it. So it's very important to find those limiting beliefs and overcome them. Uh, sometimes rather do, do nothing than do something I feel would not be perfect. Yeah, definitely that perfectionism. Like avocados and kiwi fruit. Just reading Julia's question. Like avocados and, and kiwi fruit, they separate the ugly ones. So sad. Yeah, yeah, the imperfections and, and fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the ones that are maybe not perfect often taste better. Um, life is more complex. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'd also, with that perfectionism, accepting yourself as you are is a great way to overcome perfectionism. Like in every moment of my life, I have been a perfect version of Tahi Spinks. There's been moments that I haven't been proud of and there's been there's a lot that I still want to do better. But right now, I am the perfect version of Tahi Sphinx. There is not another person in the world that I have met or that I could possibly meet that is a more perfect version of Tahi Sphinx. So I, I accept myself fully as I am right in this moment and then I have goals on what I want to improve. So when we can accept that we're always being perfect in every moment, whether we like it or we don't like it, then we can overcome that perfectionism. So some of the less commonly known reasons people procrastinate. Decision paralysis or analysis paralysis. Who gets stuck in that one? <laughs> Overanalyzing, <laughs> spinning your wheels, going around in circles. Super frustrating. <laughs> uh, avoidance of discomfort is another biggie. Uh, if we have those fears there, if we say, uh, and I'll speak into this one because this is a common one in the spaces I work in, um, being seen on social media, like posting a video, that discomf discomfort that you're feeling, that fear of being seen, that fear of your um, speaking your truth and, and your voice being heard, that becomes uncomfortable. So we avoid doing it. And a lot of people, a lot of clients I've found live in this discomfort a lot, but they call it their comfort zone. So if you feel like you're staying in a comfort zone because it feels uncomfortable to move out of it, just really check in with yourself Am I really comfortable where I'm at? <laughs> yeah, do it because you feel uncomfortable, 100%. Uh, atten attentional bias, like the quick rewards, those, those snap purchases, um, you know, the, the big shiny object syndrome, I, I like to refer to it as something that one of my kids has a lot of, you know, the moment he gets 
buys, you know, if it's in a purchase, the moment he buys something before he's even got it in his hand or used it, the mind is looking for the next hit. So there's real quick, de- yeah, quick dopamine hits. You're taking the words out of my mouth right now, Julia. You must have uh, learned a lot over the past few months working together. I love it. <laughs> um, rebellion or defiance, that's a, a big one. Uh, perceived lack of control. And the reason the word perceived is there with lack of control is what is it that we are ever in control of? And I'm just pausing to let that sink in for a moment. What is it that we are actually ever in control of? I just want you to try a little exercise for me. Hold your feet on the floor. Or hold yourself in your chair. We're trusting that gravity is going to hold us here. We don't think about it. We trust it. Yet those of us in the southern hemisphere, at least, We're hanging off the bottom of this planet by our feet and trusting this unseen force that's created by a sun and a moon and the revolutions of the earth to hold us here. So are we really in control of any of that? Yeah. Spot on, John. The only thing we're in control of is ourselves, our own emotions and our own reactions to anything we witness outside of ourselves. So that's the only thing we can control is how we see things, how we feel things, and how we perceive them uh, within ourselves. Because anything that happens outside of us, we actually have no control over. Um, And there's plenty of horrible situations going on around the globe right now that um, I could use to reference that, but I'm going to keep this in a positive frame here. Um, And then fear of success, I doubled up on that. See how how much that changed my life. I put it on two different slides. <laughs> Those um, two got in the wrong way. So how do we overcome this? So I'm going to go over my simplest uh, model, which is the Popper model, which is where we pause, we assess, we plan, and we activate. So imagine for a moment that you're driving around out on a country road, there's no cell phone signal, and you get lost. And you're driving around, you start to sweat a little bit, you start to get very anxious, the windows start to fog up. What do we do? Well, myself and John, we're men, we'll probably keep driving for a bit longer and hope we can work it out (laughs) before we pull over for help. (laughs) But at some stage, either the windows are going to get too fogged up or we're going to get too stressed out and we need a pause. So we pull over to the side of the road. And if we've got a map in the car, we'll grab that map out. And the first thing we have to do, my slides aren't changing. The first thing we have to do is assess our current location. Yeah, figure out where we are. And this is a step that's often missed in goal setting and and planning. We need to get really clear on our current situation, where we're at, because it doesn't matter where you're going on the map. If you can't find where you are right now, then you're not going to be able to plan a route between the two. And then you assess where you want to go. So you get very clear on where you're at right now. And if this is in a business sense, where am I at financially? Uh, Where do I want to be financially? If it's in a a relationship sense, what does my relationship look like now? What do I want it to look like? Or if I'm single and I want to be in a relationship, where am I at right now in my current life? And And what do I want my relationship to look like when I create it? And what do I need to change within myself to prepare for that? And these are the kind of things we're going to dive deeper into in the relationship workshop. And then we plan. So only once 
we're very clear on where we are and very clear on where we want to go. Only then can we plan our route to the destination and plan the most efficient um, path to our destination. And so, yeah, we'll map that out. And then only, th and only then is when we activate. And that's where the magic happens. Um, so in a transformational sense, this is uh, overcoming procrastination. If I go back, we'll be pausing. Where am I at in my life? How much am I procrastinating? How much time am I wasting? How much uh, resources am I, am I wasting? And what are the effects that's having on those around me? And then where do I want to be? I want to be decisive. I want to be have clarity in my thoughts. I want to uh, feel energized and I want it to be important. So now that you've got those two set points, where you are and where you want to be, in the form of procrastination, so then what is the plan? How do I overcome these things? So what tools do I need to learn to implement to overcome fear of failure, fear of success, uh, whatever those fears are that, that are there that are holding you back? Um, and maybe it's, I need to get clear on why I'm doing this. You know, my big why is massive, and I've shared it a, a lot. I want to have 100 mindset gyms throughout New Zealand um, that are run like a non-for-profit non so that people who can afford it can come into the, the space and you know, work out, meditate, do yoga, whatever is all available, but a holistic wellness, um, food planning, food prep, healthy eating, and then those that can afford it are paying their monthly subscription, and that allows for uh, you know teens that need help that can't afford it, or mums that can't afford it that need help. That gives them a space to come and get it. So it's not a publicly funded thing. It's going to be run like a non profit, non for profit. So when you come in and sign up, and you're paying your membership, you actually feel good because you know it's helping you someone else as well. Um, so that's my big why. When it gets tough. Man, that gets me up and moving again. When, when things don't look like they're working out, I've got to find a way to make them work out. There is too many people that need this in this country right now for me to give up. And I'd only be giving up on myself, but that's going to let down a lot of people. So having a big why can be a big part of your plan, as well as having the tools to overcome the uh, overthinking the the negative self-talk, all of those things, having tools to overcome that. So in the sense of activating, once you know what it is, you activate and you start, you know, you pull the car back out onto the road and you start driving. At some point, there may be a tree falling down across the road and it's going to stop you because it's on the planned path. So these limiting beliefs are gonna come up along the way again, or a different limiting belief, or they'll show up, procrastination will show up in a different way. It's like a tree falling down over the road. So what do you have to do? You have to pause again. So you reactivate the Papa model. So you pause again, you make a new plan. Uh, you, you make a new assessment. So you'd get out of the car. Can I drive around this tree? Is it right across the road? Um, do I need to get a farmer with a chainsaw? Is there another path I can take to get around it? Or do I have to literally just sit here and wait till someone comes along that can help me with it? So that's where the puppet model comes in again. So using this throughout your day so that when things come up to quickly, just take a quick moment to pause and not let that fog come into your brain uh, and that overwhelm come in. Take that quick pause, take a deep breath, <sighs> okay, where am I? What do I need to overcome this? Ah, oh, 
that's really clear. Just by pausing often, these things become clear. How often have you sat there trying to work something out, um, you know, trying to make a, a, a picture look good if you're, you're an artist? I know John's an artist. Um, or you're trying to work out something technical on your computer and it frustrates you to the point where you almost break or you're, you get really agitated and you just can't get it right. And then you walk away, you have a cup of tea, come back, sit down. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> it just it just flows again because you've had that break. The fog's dissipated, the, the anxiousness, the feelings have dissipated. And then you um, can activate again. You know? And in the sense of the tree, you may have sat there in your car just freaking out that there's a tree on the road. And then you actually get out and have a look and you can just drive around it. Uh, but it's how long you sit in that car, agitated, is, and don't choose to do something about it. That's where the procrastination is starting to impact your um, life. So I'd say get out of the car as quick as you can, assess the situation, make a plan, let's go. Because um, quite often these, the, the solution is a lot simpler than we make it out to be because we're really good at making everything seem hard, seem stressful, um, and create more excuses in our lives. So definitely uh, what I'd recommend. I'm just going to stop sharing because I've been talking for a long time. Does anyone have any questions that, or any feedback they'd like to discuss on that uh, particular part? Just ch chuck it in the chat or come off mute and share. Everyone looks like their cameras are fogged up. <laughs> no, I must be making sense or, or no sense at all. Uh, I'll continue. <laughs> right. I really need this other window up here and I cannot work out where it's gone. Oh, here it is. So yeah, the other step that I found super helpful to me was investing in mentoring and accountability. So step five is the step that a lot of people don't choose to take. However, if I take you back to that situation where you're lost in the car, you're freaking out, you pull over. Say there was a farmer there that's lived there all his life. Are you going to be a lot calmer because he knows where you want to go? He can tell you the directions. And how calm would you feel if that farmer jumped in the passenger seat and he rode shotgun and he's going to take you on, take you around this trip? And next time you get lost in the same area, you'll remember it, not because of he told you which way to drive, but he'll tell you stories along the way. Um, and that's why I use analogies a lot because the subconscious mind can only uh, remember things through repetition or emotionally. And I find analogies create enough emotion to help people remember. Um, so you're driving along the, the road and he's telling you all of these stories of his childhood and growing up in that area. So next time you get lost there, you'll be driving along. Oh, am I on the right, uh, right path? Oh, yeah, there's that um, spot where he used to go fishing in the creek. Yeah. Oh, there's his uncle's farm. Yep, I'm on the right place, spot. Oh, there's that uh, bus shelter. He had his first kiss behind. I'm going to have to turn left on the next left. So you remember that path for next time you get lost because that starts to become really well ingrained. And when you get to that tree in the road, if you've got him in the passenger seat and he's been there a million times, he'll know if there's another way you can go that may be quicker to get around the tree. He'll know the local farmers who might be able to get a chainsaw or a tractor off them to pull that tree off the road. Um, so he'll know how to overcome those obstacles because he's driven that road many times and he's come up across these obstacles himself. Uh, it'd be like putting your child in a basketball team without a coach uh, and expecting them to become an NBA player because they watch basketball on TV. Um, that's where rapid change starts to happen. And I know John understands this. He, he uh, 
as one to invest in himself for over time. Um, oh, before I get into that, does anyone have any questions on this? I feel like I'm racing through this. <laughs> so, no. Just bring yourself off me. Did you put your hand up? Or are people typing? <laughs> oh, I'm not racing. Awesome. Just making things happen. <laughs> not procrastinating on pages. Did you want something to share something, John? Or? Look like you're tapping away at your phone. <laughs> yeah, we get there faster when we have a guide. Hundred percent. Wow, we may finish early, and I'm sure that's going to be good because you're going to be all inspired to go out and get stuff done. Um, and I guess this is a great descript uh, <laughs> a great example of how it can save you time in life when you're not procrastinating and just getting on with things. Um, and, and then again, there is me bringing in a belief that this has to be one hour long. Does it have to be an hour long? Or do I just need to get the information across? <laughs> so there, this is where I catch myself out. I just pause for a moment and I realize what I was doing. So very important stuff. So if anyone did want to um, work with a coach or a mentor, uh, this is what we offer our main program here. Um, Julia loves it. She's already chucking things in the chat before I even speak. That's how much she's invested in time and energy into this. Um, so yeah, a 12 week mind and mindset activation program um, is our 12 week program. You get a total of four one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me. You get two co group coaching sessions every week. So that's 24 group coaching sessions. Uh, you get our exclusive timeout method, which is where we basically run through that pause and set and activate, but in a guided meditation form where we get really clear on what the negative things are that we're saying to ourselves, uh, move them out of the way as an energy, and then bring in the truth um, uh, to overcome that belief and feel into what it feels like. So we, we're constantly doing this through a guided meditation process. Uh, manifesting the life you desire. Uh, I'll probably talk about it in the relationship piece uh, workshop in a couple of weeks, but I believe so much in manifesting because I manifested a relationship of my dreams, even though I'd only ever been stuck in toxic relationships. And that's the process we talk through here uh, and many other things in my life. Uh, like I shared the other day, I had a, a raw that aurora that showed up the other day that a lot of people saw around the world whether it was real whether it was fake that caused the brought a lot of joy to a lot of people so uh, i'm not going to get into whether it was real or whether it was fake because it was awesome but it showed up at my house three weeks after i put it on a vision board um, i decided that was one of the things that i want to see before i die and three weeks later here it is um, so manifesting is a great thing uh, you get weekly trainings via our online portal and through our app. So those are trainings that uh, are delivered via video, audio, and PDF because we understand that everyone learns differently. Uh, so we meet everyone's needs. Um, <laughs> yeah, the earth is flat. <laughs> no. um, Access to our exclusive Facebook community. So that's only people that have been in our program or uh, are still in the program. And 24 seven access to real support. If I'm awake when you message and I'm not doing something else, I'll respond straight away. If not, it'll be within, I'd like to say I'll get back to you within an hour, Julia. <laughs> um, and we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of laughs. Uh, some of the stuff, uh, can get pretty serious, but I like to keep things enjoyable and fun along the way. Um, and so this is what the 12 weeks look like. Week one, you're reclaiming your power to choose. Week two, you're daring to succeed. 
So again, it's, it's reminding ourselves that we have that choice. We have choices. We're making choices, whether we're choosing to make decide, uh, intentional choices or whether we're making choices not to make intentional choices. It's still a choice we're making. Um, daring to succeed. So overcoming the fear of failure or daring to succeed. I like to keep these things positive. Um, time to get out of your own, own way. Uh, we find a lot of procrastination type things in that week <laughs> where we're standing in our own way and we're our own biggest enemy. Uh, manifesting the life you desire. I already talked about uh, you are not your trauma. We're going to dive into this a lot in the uh, relationship workshop and disassociating with these limiting beliefs is who we are. You know, I was born this way and that takes away our ability to ever change that. Uh, and then in the relationship sense, we're going to talk about understanding your partner's trauma and when they're responding in a way that we don't like, is it because of what we said or is it because it triggered something in them that happened in their childhood? Um, so I'm really excited about bringing that to you. Uh, being unapologetically ourselves, who doesn't want to be unapologetic in themselves uh, and not change who they are to conform? Um, <laughs> Love it, Julia. Is that resign or re-sign? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and being unapologetic, I, I got asked to go on a podcast with a lady in, in America and we recorded the podcast and then she messaged me afterwards and said, oh, can we re-record this? And... Um, could you wear something more appropriate to my audience because she was a doctor and, and she wanted me to change who I was, how I dress, uh, to be on her, on her podcast, her, her video interview. And I said, no, if you don't accept me how I am, <laughs> then find someone else. I cannot tell my children that they don't look like, have to look like people on Instagram to be happy with themselves and then change how I show up um, because someone else says that. So be unapologetic, people. Be yourself. That's the biggest piece of advice I could ever give you. Um, weeks eight and nine takes two weeks because it's a deep subject that's creating abundance. And because it's not just a financial abundance, it's abundance of love, joy, happiness, uh, connection, all of those things that... Um, that you desire because there is an abundance of it out there. Uh, there's an endless amount of love uh, available to ourselves in any given moment. It's tapping into them. Yeah, I still want your children to dress smart. And it is, it's a choice. It's that choice. Um, choosing who you are, how you show up. Um, Julia, good example. Follow an Aussie chick who's apparently youngest person in local parliament and she shares what she wants and they can't do anything about it. Oh, where's what she wants? 100%. Yeah. More people showing up their truth, the better. Yeah. Um, and then we review your ultimate vision in week 10, which is once you have a new mindset around abundance and what's actually available to you, we, we go back into the manifesting week where we um, create that ultimate vision. And then we make sure we create a 12-week plan so you can end on the on a good note and uh, send you off. Week 12, ending your day intentionally is an awesome one too. And it's actually available from, from day one when you sign up. Um, it's a, a guided meditation to help you sleep at night, help you leave today, in today, and then sleep on tomorrow's dreams. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times I've woken up and and already know how the day is going to pan out just by sleeping on it and how much more it's flowed for me. Um, that's a, that's a great, um, learning on how to, how to leave today, sleep on tomorrow. Um, so, um, lastly, the cost. Oh, wow. I didn't actually look at this from the last one. So I guess we're going to, um, offer the same 
this time around because <laughs> it's still on the screen. Um, but what I was actually going to do is for the first two people to uh, message me now that want to sign up, I'm going to do half price on that. Um, I don't have a slide that says that, but if you're one of the first two people to message me, you'll get um, this for half price. Um, and I will honor what it says on the screen. You'll get eight one-on-one -on -one sessions, including a breakthrough session with me personally. Um, that's a three to four hour session where we actually go in and heal your um, initial childhood trauma and rewrite your whole belief system. It's a super powerful session. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that was still in there, but I'll honor it. So if anyone wants that, just send me a message via Facebook or um, or whatever social media plan, um, page that you found me on. Uh, flick me a message. We'll get you signed up and we'll get you started today. Um, you could be watching the trainings tomorrow. So um, are there any more questions before we sign out early? <laughs> What is, I'd love to hear in the chat or come off mute and share what your biggest takeaway from today was. And maybe dropping in the chat, uh, what are you actually gonna change right now to move forward? Or you could come off mute, John, and just share some wisdom and, and like, enlighten people on uh, what you picked up today. You always can share great wisdom. <laughs> I'm sitting here because I think John's typing something. <laughs> Here we go, Julia. Firstly, I really love that I keep getting to be reminded of everything over and over until it's ingrained in my eyelids. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I'm gonna send the kind of send the email I've been procrastinating on and seeing my friends that I've put off over the weekend. Awesome, love it, Julia. John, keep coming back to your big why. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Yeah. That's your biggest driver. And Tanya's overcoming your fear of failure. Yeah, the big why is a big reason I keep getting up every day. And the reason I keep reaching out to people is because I lost a friend to suicide. And if people don't know, I'm available for this kind of help uh, by through my social media or through reaching out and another life is lost. Um, I, I couldn't be the thought of that. I'm not saying that it lives won't still get lost because um, people aren't brave enough to reach out but um, it'd be like if there was a river flooding and someone was um, caught on a tree and I had a helicopter I'd want people to know I had a helicopter so they could ring me to get the person off the tree before they got washed away by the flood water um, so yeah that's the other thing getting clear on why you do what you do and how that can benefit others Hi, hi. Yes, I'll just <laughs> thank you. That's been really great. Um, and and as you talk, it makes me think about if we add up all those moments when we're allowing ourselves to drift off task and off purpose. You add up all those moments over the course of a year, and then you think how much further ahead you could have been mm. if all those moments were dedicated to the task instead of scrolling and you know you suddenly realize there's probably like a month mm. or so of time that you would be that much further ahead in your journey if you keep on task compared to allowing those distractions to to win. Yeah. And then you think of how many years behind we are already over the years. <laughs> God, the, that's the scary. <laughs> yeah, it adds up quick. So yeah, line yeah. in the sand day, people. Draw a line in the sand. Not doing that anymore. I'm going to move forward with intention in every moment. Uh, loved having you here today. I hope you all got lots of value out of this and uh, we'll stay in touch. Um, anyone not um, in my network, 
Tahi Spinks, my name on the camera. That's where you'll find me on Facebook. Send me a message. Love to hear from you. And uh, we'll see you all in two weeks for the relationship workshop. I can't wait to share that with my darling and uh, I share our knowledge with you all. Take care, everyone.